uh, decided to make a video about the Marmoset and Substance uh, workflow. Uh, I did an asset for it, just a quick asset so that we could really simulate what was going on. So I basically uh, went to Fusion and made a, uh, a buckle, which I then uh, just uh, fine-tuned it in, in ZBrush. So this is my high poly, which I then brought to uh, Topo Gun and uh, uh, retopped it. So this is my low poly. Okay. The eye poly is just behind it, so I made it over. Uh, we can make a video on, on Topo Gun as well. This is a powerful tool for retopping, really easy. Just basically kind of two buttons just to, to do it all. Uh, and so after the low poly, we went to uh, Studio Max, which you could go to Maya, I guess. And I just unwrapped it. You can take a look at my UVs, and these guys are just talking too much, so I'm just going to quit Discord. Uh, and uh, here we have um, the low poly, right? With the uh, in my UVs, okay. Let's just highlight them so it's easier to see. So I uh, used the space the most that I could. Uh, use the spaces in between as well. I started uh, by lining up these here, and then just uh, went ahead and, and and did a square with what I had. Uh, they are same density, so that's the, the thing that you need to worry about. They're all pretty much the same size squares. It's easier to notice if we enlarge it and see a lot of squares. So you can see it's pretty much same. Okay, I did not eyeball this. It was it was done uh, with uh, by packing the UVs together in Max. After this, I exported this as an SPX, and I'm ready to go for Substance and uh, and uh, Marmoset, okay? So, I need to make the maps and what I do first, uh, and Substance just uh, changed my game here because they completely changed the UI today. Uh, so there's just a different thing and I don't know exactly what's gonna happen and, and if we're gonna have to go back or whatever, but um, this, uh, this should work well for you guys to try to understand the UI, I guess. So, uh, Marmoset and, uh, and uh, Substance Painter. What I, what I normally do is I always go here and I, I bake the maps in Marmoset, okay? And I do them because the baker is much easier to use, much more powerful, and has more tools than it's easier to control. Hopefully, we'll, this will give me some artifacts that we can uh, tackle with the tools of Marmoset. But most of the times, this is so good that it just makes the, the normals good out on the first uh, go. So that's, uh, let's hope there's some issues so that we can try to solve them. Uh, I need to... Get the buckle low poly, the FBX file, and I need to go to the eye poly, which I know is this one. So I'm going to open. And so I have both of them here in my scene. Uh, this is the low poly one, and this is the eye poly. The other one is the eye poly one. Okay? Uh, you can change the, the scene here. So if you don't like the way this is all too pinkish, uh, you can go to uh, sky here and choose a different preset. preset. I normally go for this one, for the Smash Windows one, okay, because it's white, it's mostly dark and white, okay, and uh, what I normally do is just, uh, in this case, when I'm baking, I just click here and click here, like in two areas, you can't, you don't, don't do it too close, just, just give it a bit of space, okay, they will get the color of whatever the HDRI map there is, is given, so in here, there is now two lights under the sky, which you can turn on the brightness, and choose a color. So one of them I'm just gonna put like a bluish cold color, not too much. And the other one I'm gonna give it a bit of a warmer color. So a warmer white, but both white, okay? And I'll just increase and crank the, the light. What this does by having one light here and one light there on, on, on different spots is that when I hold shift and rotate with my mouse click, I get a nice rim light around my, around my object and I start to visualize and I can see it as I'm doing it now, right? So this is the, the logic behind doing this setup. This setup is just a quick setup to, to visualize uh, your, your normals, okay? It's not for final uh, Photoshop, uh, photo render or whatever. It's just for, for visualization purposes. Uh, you can, on this thing here now, you can just lower the brightness of the environment if you want and increase the child brightness. That will just crank even up and turn it more dramatic. It's not what we want for this case, okay? We would do that on the final render, but in this case, let's just open this up. We really need to see everything that's going around so that we can bake it, okay? Uh, then we have this bread uh, icon here that is called the baker, so we call it new baker. I dragged the 
high poly one onto the high poly part and the low poly one onto the low poly part. I can minimize these so that it's less confusing. So I have the low poly and the high poly, they're both on the same spot. I actually can turn off the eye of the eye poly, okay? And I click the baker and I have several options here. First thing you're going to choose is a place where you want to output your map. Uh, sure, let's just make a new folder here. So this is going to be called the buckle. And inside the buckle, we're going to call this the buckle, which is just the one texture. So we call it buckle because then it's going to get the name of buckle normals, but buckle A or buckle, buckle curvature or whatever you want to paint, right? So we call it by buckle. We can choose the size of the maps that we want. If it's really important thing, just do it 4K for the baking. Uh, in this case, I'll just do it 2K. The samples, I always put to 16. Um, and basically, you can choose whatever maps you want from here now. Let's just start with the normal, okay? And then, this is the, part, the important part. Flip X, flip Y, flip Z, okay? Uh, normal maps uh, have different... The different engines read the normal maps in a different way, okay? So, in Unreal Engine, and in Substance Painter, for example, uh, they use the Y channel as a positive, as a plus, okay? And in Marmoset, or in uh, X Normal, uh, they use it as a negative. So, if I bake a normal map here in Marmoset, it's going to be negative, because Marmoset is negative. When I bring it to, to Substance Painter, because it's positive, the normal map will show inverted. And I'll, I'll explain what it means later on, but it will show invert. So if we want to, to aim for Substance Painter or Unreal, we need to flip the Y channel, okay? So we're flipping the Y channel here. Cool. Now that it's flipped, we can just uh, click Bake and see what happens. Okay, we click Bake. Apparently, it just baked it already. This default map, which is what we assigned to there, and if it's not, I just did. So I'm just going to click the normal map and go to the Buckle Normals and click Open. Cool. Now, because I flipped the map, you can see this is all jacked up. Because Marmoset is negative, right? And I did it, I did it, I did change and flip the Y. So, in here, we need to flip the Y. So, we flipped it once to bake, and now we're flipping it again to visualize. So, we're again, with the map that it's, now this time, the map is available and good for, for Painter and um, Unreal, but, at the same time, we can visualize it in Marmoset by just ticking that thing there. So, you can see this came out clean as a whistle. Doesn't surprise me, this is just an awesome uh, rendering uh, baking tool, really fast, really good. Okay, it's sad that we don't have a, an artifact because I wanted to show you how you can clean artifacts. I will show you nevertheless. So, uh, when you have an artifact, you go to load and you click Paint Offset. Okay, this opens up a thing here, uh, like a UV, your UVs. If you mouse click here on a point, it will bring your your cage closer, and it will generate an artifact in this case because I put it too much. If I hold Control and click, it will bring your cage outwards, and it will fix whatever uh, issues you have there. So when there's really tight spots, you can just click, and it will go in. And when you have really loose spots that you need to, to enlarge, you just go there and right click. You see that it gets painted there. Okay? White means uh, inwards and black means outwards. Uh, all that matters is that it works. After you have the cage done, you just click done, and you go to Baker and you bake again. And because this has hot reload, immediately it sends it to the file, overwrites the file that you did, and immediately puts it there, and you get the result here again. Great. Now that we have the normals in their bake properly, let's go and do the ambient occlusion. We just click ambient occlusion and we can bake any of the other uh, maps that you want. But all I do, uh, I'm, I'm telling you my workflow, okay? So I'm going to do ambient occlusion as well. I already have the normal, so I can tick that off. In this case, it doesn't matter the, the Y, so you can just leave it there. This flip Y thing is just for the normals. So just bake. And it's baking my AO now. I normally uh, just place the bake, the bake AO on the albedo, just so we can um, take a look and visualize it uh, on the diffuse channel. Okay, so now we have an AO that was baked for there. We can see that it's clearly there. If we take it on and off, we now have an AO. Great. Uh, and this is basically all that we need for, for our object, okay? 
and we're on our way to, to have a, a workflow between this and Painter. Now let's go to Painter and I told you this is a different interface so let's see what happens. I'm going to click New, new and uh, I select the mesh and my mesh is on the what was it? Folder called? Mentor? Or here. So I want the buckle low poly as thing. Direct X, I'm going to choose 2K. Uh, the workflow, I'm going to choose metallic roughness. And um, import mesh. The maps that I want to import are these two that I baked, the AO and the normal. So open. And with that, I'll click OK. Cool. Now we have our map here. If we go to our yeah, to this part here, we can select normal map. And so we click normal map. Because we baked it with Y positive, so we flip the Y, uh, it is showing correctly. If we did not do that, it would show like this. Messed up. Okay? Cool. Back to Painter. We will apply the AO map as well. And bam, here we are. Now, one of the things I like to do on my projects at the start is that the panorama uh, HDRI is really a yellow and affects your color. So, what you want to do is you want to go and find uh, the settings of the thing. Now, this will be trouble because they change where everything is. So, it's not here, I'm pretty sure. And it's not on the properties list either. And what is our shader settings? Is three log shader settings. Display settings. Environment, right. Okay, so instead of the panorama, we're going to choose one of the white ones. Okay, I, I like to choose Studio 3. Okay, and now you can see that it's immediately uh, wider. Okay. Or you can choose another one, so it's just, it's really up to you. Let me choose, see this one. Yeah, this one is wider as well. So whatever it's wider, it, it doesn't affect the color as much. It's better for you to see what's going on. Okay, unless you're going for a yellow environment and you know what you want to do. So just all I'm trying to say is just try to use a close uh, HDRI of what you have here to what you're gonna have in Mama Set here. So otherwise, uh, it's gonna look quite different, of course. Okay. So now that we are in Painter, I'm just going to quickly uh, show you how to set up this thing. So I'm just going to choose a uh, smart material. Anything will do. Uh, let me just choose, for example, the bronze edge. Why not? So layers. Just delete this layer. Drag the bronze edge here. And uh, we have bronze edge. Now, it doesn't show anything because I don't have the maps baked yet. Okay, it needs the other maps in order to be baked. So let's do that. Let's go to here and let's bake the other mesh maps. Uh, because I already have the normal and because I don't need an ID map and because I don't need an ambient occlusion, ID maps serve uh, when you want to paint different colors of different parts. Okay, um, I could uh, explain that to you if you want. So let's say, for example, here in my eye poly, okay, let's make it a more neutral color. Uh, if I just uh, ah, my mask. If I just mask this part here, for example, and if I want to paint this thing like red here, I could fill object. Okay. And then if I invert my mask, I could go like to a green here and fill object. Cool, and I can unmask it now, and I have something that is two colors, right? This is on my high poly verb, okay? So if I export this, and if I go to buckle, which is my high poly, and replace it, yes, I can now come to uh, substance, and even marmoset as well, but I can come to substance and choose to make an ID map, okay? Let's make this ID map, and you'll see what will happen. An ID map of 2K by 2K, the dilation width is the padding, okay? It's how long it will stretch from the UV cluster. So from this part, from this uh, border here, how much it will stretch to the rest, okay? This is important for mid mapping in game engine. So uh, you don't want it at zero, but you don't want it uh, a lot. So just don't mess with settings that you don't know what it is. Um, but if you want a cleaner uh, normal map, sometimes you just need to make it shorter or larger. Uh, up to you. Anyway, ID map, and we're going to choose the uh, 
buckle thing. So it has two colors now. And the ID map, what it does, it, it projects to the low poly and creates a, an ID map. You'll see, bake default maps, let's do that. So now the map has been baked, you can see here, it has two different colors. So that, what that allows me in, term, in practical means is that if I want to assign bronze to one part and bronze to another, imagine like you're doing some shoes and there is stitching and there is like a lot of stitching and you made all the stitching in, in ZBrush, okay? You made all these little dots and if you paint all these little dots or this little subtool uh, that you have in ZBrush with a color like red and the rest of the shoe like green, when you come here, you can just select all the stitches to paint them instead of painting them manually. So you would do that by just uh, assigning another material. So let's assign this green material. Okay, bronze corroded. And we would then add a mask with color selection. That means that you can choose a color uh, with your mask. So you pick your color, you click here, and you choose that you want it on this ID map. And so, instead of painting it, you immediately paint it with, with that. So that's what the ID map does, okay? Uh, we're not going to use it here. It's very useful for stitching and for stuff that is really repetitive. Uh, and, and like if you're doing chain mail, if you're doing like a cord on your phone like Jan was doing, uh, there's a lot of stuff that it's useful for this, but you don't really need to do it. Okay, so uh, great. Let's uh, just delete this for now. And uh, we don't need that ID map really, but it's there now, so no problem. If you don't want to bake the ID map, you don't really need to have the, the, low, the eye poly here for the other um, uh, bakes, so I can just remove it. All I need to get is what it's missing. So world space normal map, curvature, a position and a thickness. It says here that the thickness needs the, the eye poly uh, map. What we're going to do is take this use low poly mesh as eye poly mesh. So we click that and we just bake. Cool. Now that we have it, the smart material is doing its job, right? It's trying to uh, adapt to the thing and do whatever it has to be done. Great. Uh, let's take a look. It made a curvature, it made a position map, it made a thickness map. That's amazing. We have everything that we need and we have this guy going on. All right, it's time to send it to Marmoset and see what, how it looks like. Okay, so let's right click. Oh, it doesn't let you right click anymore. Great. File, export, textures. Okay, there's no right clicking anymore. And uh, yeah, this seems to be correct. Now here we're gonna send it to gonna make a new folder. I'm gonna call it bitmap. Okay, and this bitmap select folder and just export. And substance does its uh, magic. Okay, cool. And we go see here, Marmoset, what's going on. Okay, now that we are here, we can just uh, duplicate. So we create a new material and we call it uh, buckle mat. Why not? And now that we have the buckle mat, we can just uh, remove this normal and remove this AO. We can assign it to the thing, and now we can go to normal, we go to mentor, we go to bitmaps folder, and we have a normal map. Okay? Because it's positive there and negative here, if you don't click the, uh, the flip Y, you're going to get this result. So if it looks good in Painter and bad in Marvel set, flip the Y channel. Right? That's on the normal. And then we have the gloss map. The gloss map, we're using a metal roughness, so it's not a gloss that we want. We want the roughness, so we invert the gloss map. A roughness map is nothing more than a gloss invert. So we're going to go to the roughness, select it, and invert it. Okay, and we're getting there. From there, we're going to go to the albedo, which is the same as base color, just a different word, and we choose our base color. Great, and now we need the specular to change into a metal, because we're using the metalness workflow. And we click it, and we choose metallic. Okay. Awesome. And this is what we have in there, believe it or not. Okay. Now, it's not looking like we want it. It's different, right? Well, not much. It's just more yellow here. If we change this uh, panorama thing, where was it? Display settings? Yeah. If we change this to uh, this one, 
you'll see that it looks more like what we had there. This is what I normally use for that HDR I have. But anyway, light is everything, of course. If you change the light, you change the way things look. Okay. Awesome. Now the occlusion map, we can still apply it here, which was on my base, so my AO. We apply it there. And from here, we can start uh, tweaking things. Uh, I'm going to go and delete these lights. One, two lights. And I'm going to just look at the object like from the front part here. I would do this for a character or for whatever object. So I'm going to do the same. And when I'm, I, I just go, go a bit of a distance from it and I'll click the light button here. And it creates a light where my camera is. So if I rotate, you will see that I created a light there. Okay? So I have a light that is pointing there, and I can just increase its brightness to do whatever I think is right. Okay? That's the one thing. Then I'm going to put myself behind, and here, as a three-point light system, I'm going to create here, create a light. And then on this side, same thing, another rim light. Now we're going to go back to our first light. And we're going to look at our object and we're going to play with the lights. Okay, so we have the first light. You can just increase or decrease. And then these ones, they're just giving us rim light there. So we'll just increase that there, maybe. Distance is important as well. This one. Maybe we make this light a bit warmer. So we just bring it to this side here. Increase it a bit. As you increase it, you'll see that obviously this gets different. But we increase the light a bit warmer, and we're starting to get more or less what we have in substance. Okay, and these ones here on the back, we can also um, either make it colder if we want it to. It's really up to you. And this one as well, a whitish, bluish type of thing. Not much, just a bit. Okay, now when the shadows are too sharp, uh, a thing to do is to increase the the shape of the light. So if you, if you increase the width and the and the length, it will soften. Now it's not this light that is causing that shadow there. So maybe it's this one. Let's see. Yeah, it's causing it there. So we're just going to increase the width a little bit, the length a little bit, and that a little bit. Cool, and the same for the other one. We want shadow, but not as dramatic as it was. Okay, so we have shadow there as well, soft now. Cool. Uh, on the render, there's a lot of stuff we can do. We can crank up the resolution to two uh, things. We can see the wireframe here if we want. We can put local reflections on or off. I normally leave it off. I, you can increase ambient occlusion. And normally I just crank it up a bit. I rest shadows for sure. And then GI. GI is just uh, light bouncing around. It really makes the object uh, shine kind of thing. Okay, now this light here. Now, the important thing to do this is to, to understand is that now that we have this setup here, and I'm just going to uh, Turn this off because it consumes a lot of resources and I'm recording. But now that we have this, this on and we have a, a setup of light uh, for our object and stuff, um, it's fully integrated with Painter because we export it once. So if I'm here and I just decide, okay, I want to add a bit more color variation to this. So let me just go here first and just actually change the freaking, where is this, not shader set, display set, change that to the other one we were using, yeah, this one, it's, looks a bit better, okay, so, if I wanted to have, like, more color variation, and uh, let's say I'm just going to open that and see, that's the base map, so that's where the color is coming from, if I just duplicate this color here, and if I just wanted to add more color variation, I can just make it darker here, and then I'm just going to add, uh, a black mask and then so that you can't see it and then I'm going to add a fill 
And this field that I'm going to add is going to probably be a procedural field, some procedural. And I'm going to choose black and white spots. Why not? So there. What it does is that if you alt and left click one one mask, you will see what it's doing. Okay, you can only you can see the mask alone. Okay, very useful. So uh, you can play with the settings now of the black and white spots. So balance, more or less, contrast, you can make it really dramatic, and uh, non-square, noise parameters, you, can, you have all these sorts of, st of stuff that you can play around with. I'm going to click M to go back to my material, but you see what it's doing now. Okay, I have a bit more color variation to my thing. So it's all the same material, it's the same thing. I just added a little bit of material, and if in the end, if you think it's too much, you can just you can always come here and actually uh, it, we're on the base color here, so we're just gonna reduce this a bit, and you can you can play with this to, to actually fine tune it as much as you want. But let's say we want that, okay? Once we're happy with with our thing, we can just we can't right click anymore. We can go file and export textures, and since everything is set up, we just click export. Click OK, and when you go back to Marmoset, he already assumes the last uh, the last changes. Okay, and this is basically uh, this is basically it. So coming here, I can go for example. Let's let's do something that will show uh, easier. So add a filler. I'm just going to add a filler to the top of this here. And I'm going to add a black mask to it, and on the black mask, I'm just going to do whatever here. I'm going to go File, Export Textures, and well, now File, Export Textures, and Export, and it will immediately uh, show my changes there in Marmoset. Okay, so this is basically it. As I'm really not happy with the way this, this HDRI is, is proving to be, so I'm just going to go change this and see what I get with the different uh, HDRI map. This is too white, but yeah, but yeah, it's not bad. The late day field is not bad either, but it's more outside. You can clearly see it's outside. Uh, garage. To right, you can actually get the panorama one that, that was being used in Substance and put them here, or put the ones that uh, Substance is using. Let's try and do that as well. So, uh, these are called Soft Front One. Where are they now? They would be File Explorer. They would be on my Steam, Steam apps, uh, common, S too much stuff here, Substance Painter, Resources most likely, uh, Shelf, Algorithmic, Environments, Studios, yeah. Studio one front, this is called studio one front, two backs, studio one front, two backs, this. Awesome. Okay, so if you go Marmoset and we go uh, open, we can probably go there. I should have went to immediately through here, so let's go Z. Jesus, my friend. Let's go Steam, Steam apps, common. Substance Spanner 2018, Resources, Shelf, Algorithmic, Environment, Studio, and wow, you can't get it from there like this because it's a different file. Has to be it. Okay. Don't remember how to put it here though. I wonder. Hmm. I have to make a new video on that one. I don't remember which file type it does save, but you can you can do that. And you can also do the opposite as well, bring the HDRI map from one to the other as well there. Uh, the important thing is that these lights here are also messing it up, of course. So when you're uh, with a different map, 
you can choose wait they filled this one let's try this one's not bad really it's just just different and so these lights are maybe too strong let's just decrease them a bit This is way more uh, like bronze looking, even better than substance. So, but yeah, the the the, the conclusion is simple: is you whatever uh, aspect you you change here really fast, you can get it on your rendering uh, engine, okay? And then you will get beauty shots, uh, nice renders, okay? All these renders uh, that I've done, uh, I'm going to show you what, some really fast. We're all done in. Uh, in Marmoset, okay, so all this is, is Marmoset lighting. Uh, let's see, uh, lean fill like a gun, for example. This is Marmoset. Sumo guy, the same thing. Marmoset. This thickness light here coming through, all the shading and everything. This is all. Uh, Marvel set and uh, everything is really so. Marvel set. Okay, so it's a matter of playing with the light. It's not obviously a clip alone. Uh, it's not going to look brilliant, but um, as you can see, you can play with it a, a lot. So uh, and from there, I just I just uh, I continuously uh, work on substance and, and export things as I go. And in the end, when I want to bake, I just, I'll just bake it. And if you want to uh, use animations, you can as well. So things that have animations uh, can be played here. And on the render, when you just go uh, to double and you uh, enable GI, you get you start to get a really uh, nice looking uh, object here. You can go, always go to the main camera and not actually change this field of view. Sometimes it helps a lot to just reduce it to what a normal human eye would do, which is this. Okay, and from there, let me just reverse it so that we don't see that thing there. From here on the camera, you have a lot of stuff as well. You have field of view, you have depth of field, which is basically if you uh, click it and then you just middle mouse button on somewhere. Like, for example, if you want to have uh, a bit of focus on this part, you middle mouse button here and then the rest gets blurred. So, this is a quite useful feature. Okay. Uh, you can choose the focus distance, of course, and play with these settings. You have the flare, which might not do anything because there's not complex scene here or lights. Uh, the sharpen is you can sharpen the thing a lot. If you have glows, you have to actually put a bloom to this to actually make it glow. Look how, how the thing is glowing there. Okay, on the top right. Uh, so if you want to, uh, you can actually take two shots. One that is with no bloom and one that's with bloom. And then in Photoshop, just, just bring out whatever part you want. Okay. The vignette, if you want to just make a shot like more charismatic, the grain, it just helps to blend everything together. Don't do it too much. And, uh, and yeah, hope this was helpful to learn uh, Marmoset and, and, and to understand that this is a real-time engine, so the same as a, a video game engine would take. And the results here are much more valid than the results uh, inside Paint. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Have a good night, guys.